Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Carrie Kinsella. I am one of the board members here at Parat. I'd like to welcome everybody in person and also over Zoom. Hello, everybody on Zoom. This is our second in-person uh, presentation since December and second in years. So welcome, everybody. I am going, I'm here to introduce Mike and Sally Harris, um, who are presenting their new book, Now You Can Take My Picture. They are passionate about cultural photography. They have been taking pictures for 15 years, but most recently in retirement, they, get, they have taken this up full time. They like to take pictures in situation and seek out interesting everyday experiences. For instance, a cattle auction in Oaxaca, or um, what was our second example, a fishing village in Colombia. They will be presenting all of their work here. They are also members of two photography clubs, the Stanford Photography Club and the Brown Glass. They've exhibited in numerous shows all around Fairfield County, and they also present photo essays of their work. So I'd like to introduce them, and they will introduce their work. Thank you, right. Mary. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very glad to be here. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting audience. Uh, particularly when we take into account people join us, joining us on Zoom. Uh, thank the Parat uh, for generously uh, hosting us and doing all they could to, uh, to promote the program. Um, first, we'll give a little more background than Carrie gave. Uh, Mike and I have been photographing for uh, about 15 years, as she said. And we love traveling around the country, around the world, uh, photographing different cultures. And we sometimes we go with a photographer that we know that is um, a well-known uh, like National Geographic photographer who can take us to a place and take us to people that they know and, and let us photograph people really living out their daily lives. And sometimes we'll go on our own. Mike is a great researcher, and he will find he will find his own um, great uh, photographic experiences. Um, and we just really we just enjoy it so much. So this is actually Mike's book, and um, what we thought we would do tonight is just uh, do like an interview. And I'll ask Mike some questions and to give you an idea of what he went through to get this book out. And then we'll go through the book and, and highlight a couple of the, um, or several of the images in the book. Along the way, if you have any questions, stop us. Absolutely. On Zoom too, I don't know if you can do that. Yeah. I'll and um, we don't, we can't see who's on Zoom. So whoever's out there, hi, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Um, so I guess, uh, oh, and also we have books for sale. So. If you want to buy one tonight, you can do that. If you're on the Zoom and want to and don't have one yet, um, just email us. So we'll get started. And Mike, why don't you tell us what made you want to do a book? Well, I'm, uh, from a number of years ago, I did my first book for the Morocco show. Uh, it was, uh, you can see it's not terribly substantial. It's a nice book. It's on blurb. I don't mean to put blurb down, but if you want control over uh, the size and shape of your images, uh, you really want to go with a traditional uh, published book. So, I, plus I give full credit to uh, uh, Jerry, who uh, has been a mentor of mine. I, I take him a picture and say, I want a book. <laughs> You've got to do a book. And so he's Mike's uh, biggest supporter when it comes to making this book. Yeah. Jerry Paul, thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, I saw a notice uh, about a uh, workshop. It was a, just a three day workshop. It was in Boston. It was going to be um, uh, a gear to teach us everything we needed to know to make a book. I don't have a lot of. Uh, 
working knowledge of uh, the book technology called InDesign. Uh, this whole weekend was spent uh, trying to fit our work into InDesign, and it was very frustrating for me. Uh, the high point of the weekend is uh, Mike McWeeny was there. Uh, he was a technical assistant for the weekend, but he displayed uh, uh, tremendous ability to get around in design and turn the work into uh, a good finished product. He took one of my books, uh, uh, our books, on, um, uh, uh, it was called uh, the last book. Finishing. Uh, oh, the the our that was our show. Yeah, our show. And he went through that, and he he said, "I wouldn't include this picture. I would include that one. Uh, you must have one of somebody that uh, different than than I was showing him." And in my mind, I said, "This person would be a good editor." And I asked him if that was something he would do. If he would consider it, and he said yes, uh, absolutely. I said, "Well, I'll be back to you." Uh, that was in the first month of 2020. Uh, we know what happened in March of 2020. The country shut down, and I sh shut down at home with my computer on uh, uh, full power, and I looked up all the photographs I would put into a book. I picked ones that that were not necessarily uh, uh, apropos of the title, but I liked them. Uh, they were my better photographs. And we ended up not using those, uh, just using uh, well, a number of photographs that I like, but other ones that complement them and build on them. So how many did you? How many photographs did you start out with? And probably a thousand. And then how many are ended up uh, in the hundred and six? <laughs> how did you call them all down? Well, uh, <clears throat> between us, we uh, agreed that eight hundred and forty of them <laughs> <laughs> probably did work. The dust. <laughs> Um, I think one nice thing about Mike McQueenie was that he he had an objective eye, so he could look at Mike's work subjectively or objectively and um, and say that works well with that. And Mike, when you're a photographer, you look at your own work and you cannot separate the experience that you had while you were photographing it from the actual photograph. So it was really nice to have someone who was objective and could help Mike pick up these images. Yeah. Um, well, sequencing. The, the, the whole theory of, uh, of creating a good photography book is built around sequencing. And it's uh, very important that the first page relates to the second page, to the third page, to the fourth page, right on through the book. Um, so what was the format? How did you, what did you decide to include in the book? Besides photographs? Well, uh, first of all, uh, as you commented, we've been lots of places with lots of good photographers. And I thought it'd be wonderful to get each of them to write something about one photograph, except for Eddie Solway, who I chose to write my, uh, my uh, introduction, if he was willing to do that. And I called him. Uh, Put on all my powers of persuasion <laughs> and said, Eddie, would you do this? Uh, it would be a tremendous help. And he agreed. And he's a great writer and he knows us so well. He knows he was there at the beginning for Mike. And um, it's really the, the reason that Mike got into photography and then I got into photography. So he was the perfect person yeah. to write the introduction. Uh, the book, by the way, was had to agree on a size. It's eight by ten or ten by twelve. I don't know if you can. Uh, it's uh, got 160 pages, leaving 146 pages for photographs. And uh, I like the size; it works out well. Uh, and then, what about printing? 
Printing uh, was a tough thing. We chose a company in Canada called Friesen's. Uh, I had been in touch with uh, companies in, all over, uh, from China to, uh, to uh, Belgium. Belgium. And I was very close to signing with Belgium when uh, uh, it became apparent there could be shipping problems. And I, I was talking to a friend who had used Friesen's for her book. And she liked it a lot. And they did a great job, I have to say. Um, so let's, why don't we go through the book? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, the other thing that's important yes. is who gets the book in the end, who becomes your fulfillment right. uh, uh, person. Because I, I have taken the book several places and they have declined to sell it, uh, saying that it's not publicly known. Uh, where a fulfillment center provides uh, copies of your book to anybody who needs it via uh, uh, like a distributor. In Ingalls is one, uh, and they supply to uh, bookstores all around the country. Okay, well, let's go through the book. So this is the cover. Now you can take my picture. Mm -hmm. I Notice, love this. I love this page. It says dedicated to Sally Harris. I love that. <laughs> it always makes me cry. Um, then here's a wonderful introduction. We won't read it, but we thank Eddie all the way for that. And then one thing I liked about what Mike McQueeny did is he would, um, there was a lot of text and then he said, but now you've got to have a little breather, a little breathing space. So let's just put a couple of photographs in, not a lot of text I and then break it up with uh, two Irish travelers. We're gonna see more of them later. And then here's the piece on Mike. With my dog, Darnie. His first, my first, first photograph. First sub subject. And then here's the picture that is the reason for the title of the book. So why don't you tell that story? Okay, uh, we were walking down uh, the street in uh, Calif, New Mexico. Big, big cameras over our shoulders and I hear this voice, don't take my picture. And I looked over and uh, uh, saw this Navajo woman. And I said, don't worry, we don't take pictures if people don't want them. Uh, I, so we talked about what was going on in town. She was very nice. Uh, she directed us up the road of peace to a celebration, which was great fun. And I said to her, you must miss him. And she said, what do you mean, miss him? I said, your t-shirt, it says Obama inauguration on it. I, you must miss him. She said, I do, I miss him a lot. I said, no more than me. Uh, I miss him tremendously. With that, she came up and she embraced me uh, for two seconds, three seconds. Uh, she backed up stuck her hand in the air and said, now you can take my picture. <laughs> and, and so I was telling a, a, a friend this story and he said, that's a good name for a book. There you go. And there the thing go. is, this isn't the only picture that, that shows that reaction. I think Mike has this gift of um, when he's photographing people, he just makes them feel at ease. And if they, if they, don't want their picture. If they don't want their picture taken, I walk away. <laughs> and Mike sits down and starts talking to them and he just waits it out. And I admire him for that. So do you want to just tell sure, me? Sure, we have a, a couple here from France. Uh, one on the right is uh, a woman. She's uh, being looked at carefully by the uh, waiter who she's giving her order to. Uh, and the guy on the left uh, is a butcher taking a break. Uh, this woman, uh, I stayed with quite a while, uh, got to know her, and she allowed me to take her picture and pose for it. Now, these are two examples of people who never gave permission at all. I never even talked to either one of them. I, if I see something that I think will make a good picture, I take it. I wait for, uh, I don't wait for them to say, okay. We went to uh, uh, 
Iowa because why? We've never been there. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Sally, come on, we're going to Iowa. And you know, you talk about cultures all over the world, but there are places in the United States that just have wonderful cultures. And Iowa is one of them, that Midwestern. And so tell them about going into the visitor center. We're in the uh, Madison County, Iowa. And you've heard of the book, The Bridges of Madison County. So I said, what is there to see around here? She said, oh, well, you are, of course, would be interested in the map of where all the bridges are. I said, that's interesting. I, I'd be more interested in Friday night football because I really like football. And uh, how many of you have seen the series on television? Friday Night Lights, yeah. Just two people. Well, it, it was a, an acclaimed series uh, that ran through a town in Texas that was having uh, Friday night football. And she said, we, we do, we, we, as a matter of fact, I manage the band or have a role in managing the band. And the band is pictured right here. And it was homecoming weekend and her son played on the team. And that's all of a sudden we're, we're at this Friday night football game. That's just the way it happens. So we have two pictures from there. Uh, the helmets lined up before the game and uh, the boy leading prayer. Uh, we're going to jump to a rodeo. Uh, not many people, uh, when they're planning a trip across the country, we were going from Washington State, Idaho, uh, Montana, the Dakotas, and back again. Uh, we bought a, a, a one-way ticket going out, didn't know when we'd come back. Uh, and the first, the, the, one of the key places we uh, said we were going to stop is Belt, Montana. And this is the Belt Rodeo. Mike had read about this rodeo and said, we're going to Belt. And we love rodeos. So here are a couple, the, these aren't necessarily all from Belt, but they're yeah. different rodeos. Uh, uh, you've all photographed two shadows having a talk. <laughs> here we have a, a bull coming right at the photographer. That's me. The great thing about the um, <laughs> the great thing about photographing these small rodeos is you can get right up to the fence, and no one makes you step back. It's beautiful. A lot of uh, falls at rodeos. So I, uh, I'd say more people fall than finish, and uh, uh, the hat represents. Uh, it belonged to a, a rancher who agreed that we could go with him and see his ranch. One of the photographers we have um, traveled with is a woman named Magdalena Soleil, and she spent a lot of time in the Mississippi Delta and um, has gotten to know a lot of people there and will take a, a small group of photographers with her and, and we can go into the houses of some of the, these uh, people in Mississippi and it's just an incredible experience. And um, she, I'm going to read what she wrote because I, I love this description. This was her comment in the book. Mike and Sally have traveled with me on two occasions to explore the Mississippi Delta, where the old South lives on. Mike's smile while he photographs puts his subjects at ease. He becomes a fly on the wall and moves around looking for the light, a gesture, a, a color to include in his frame. This image of a man sleeping on the couch and a child running out the door has such heart and beauty. It offers a glimpse into family life in the Mississippi Delta. The fish trophy on the wall that you can see in the background gives a nod to the images of Eggleston, a photographer. The child running past the sleeping man surrounded by the dense yellow backdrop of the wall expresses a unique energy and dichotomy between the exhausted man and the exuberant child. <laughs> Thank you, Magdalena. <laughs> right outside the house, uh, uh, the young man you see on the left is uh, uh, just repairing his car. I, I think he's going to have a whole new car when he's done. <laughs> on the right is a, a woman, and I offered a prize to anybody who could come up with the reason.
reason why she's posing the way she is. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Cooling down? Well, well <laughs> yeah. I'm not, not going to give that prize away. But. Just tell the story. <laughs> uh, she had a handkerchief she held over her face. She didn't want to be photographed. And uh, her boyfriend, who was outside just hamming it up for the camera, said, honey, take that, hammer, uh, that handkerchief down. This is fun. And put your leg up on the dash <laughs> while you're at it. So she did, and she made a perfect photograph. <laughs> This is down in uh, more, more in New Orleans. Well, that's in uh, the first. Oh, Clarksdale, Mississippi. Clarksdale, in New Orleans. Okay. This is a uh, card shark, a, a pool shark, warming up in uh, Clarksdale, and a man in a remote town in Clarksdale, lighting or er, in Mississippi, uh, lighting up. Uh, this is razor blade. He's named that way because he dressed so sharp. Uh, you wouldn't want to touch him, you'd cut yourself. But he got up and he sang at a nightclub and I listened to him in a very earthy voice and he got done and uh, came over to where I was standing he said, you want to buy uh, uh, some uh, of my CDs? And I said, sure, I'll buy all that you have if you'll let us take your picture. So uh, he went out on the porch and we did a photography session and he talked to uh, Sally and he came up with uh, his philosophy of life, which circled around uh, religion at the local church. And I said, oh, what church do you go to? And he gave us the name. And uh, I said, could we go with we'd be welcome there. It was uh, Saturday. Uh, and he said, you'd be my guest? And he said, I, I'm amazed. It's, uh, so we went to church the next day, and we were surrounded by uh, uh, African-Americans totally, except for the two of us. It was an enormous church. And everybody came up and welcomed us Everybody, they just got in a line because we knew Rose Razorblade and he had told them we were coming and it was just the most wonderful welcome. It, it, and then the service. The whole <laughs> thing is, is about dancing and singing and uh, coming back here, you go to a, a church and it's sort of dull. It's about, <laughs> it's about, did I say everything at the right point in time? There, nobody cares who says what. They all scream and yell. It's just great. And we did not take our cameras to that church. Um, we just felt we should not. I wrote an article about this for the Greenwich Sentinel, and I called up the church to make sure I had it right. And I, I went to their website, and it said the following uh, Sunday was a prayer services for Razor Play, who had died. Uh, this is maybe a year after we met him, but he had died. Yeah. More church? Uh, church in the... Okay, now we go to Coney Island. Coney Island, which is... Uh, uh, everybody's been to Coney Island, right? We love Coney Island. <laughs> <laughs> a photographer's dream. Uh, this is a... Uh, uh, some guys practicing gymnastics who ended up in this pose where they weren't touching each other. Each one is separate. Uh, that's the roller coaster at Coney Island and a big man with a little <laughs> shadow walking on the high line. Here we have a, a perfect uh, uh, set of two photographs that uh, complement each other. At the left, You've got football, and at the right, you've got a little boy running through a, a fountain. Then a little humor thrown in as, yeah, you, <laughs> as a breather. You can't get by with uh, all seriousness. So this is a humor. Of course, in uh, Iceland. 
And this is the part of a series on uh, 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 Amish. Uh, most people wonder, it's quite surprising you can't photograph Amish. Well, we met the children for, first, photographed them, and then sent pictures uh, uh, with um, a request that we'd like to photograph the entire family. And we got back a 12 page or a 10 page uh, letter telling us what each child does. <laughs> the mother wrote us back and yeah. just went through child by child and the age and what that, you know, where they go to, what they, what grade they're in. And um, it was, they were just wonderful. And so we stumbled into this great relationship with an Amish family that we've had for about seven years now. And they are, they're like family to us. They call every time they have a new baby, which is often, <laughs> once a year. <laughs> they have 10 more than that. They have 13 now. Uh, children coming down the driveway. And then in the right is a living room, which if you uh, see the word, it's faith. Yeah. Uh, and faith really does uh, play a big role. And they're great about, um, the mother said, the mother really got it. She said to the children, why do you go off and play? But just be yourselves and these, um, Mike and Sally are gonna photograph you. And we, the one Daniel on the left is a little ham, so he's fun to photograph. <laughs> but otherwise they would just. That is Ruth uh, at the window. And uh, don't know if Ruth reminds you of any painter, but. Uh, I like to think it's uh, Vermeer. That nice light. The three boys, uh, three kids climbing on the greenhouse on the right. And the grandfather showing us around the church. Uh, the church was closed. Uh, and he agreed that if we would give him a ride to the, to the church, uh, he would open it up and we raised the, these large windows that let almost no light in. It was dark as can be. And he opened the windows uh, and then he uh, walked in the back door and I perfect got him at that point. Uh, you should have seen him in our Lexus. <laughs> it was. Uh, we had the GPS up and, and he was. He was pretty cool about it. Yeah, that's Harvey. He's the bookkeeper. At the, well, we met them at a, a roadside stand, yeah. and Harvey is the one that writes up the, the order. And so he's, you know, it's really interesting. They, they're getting their math done by adding up the price of apples. Here we say goodbye to the Amish and hello to the Hooterites. Uh, uh, you probably don't know the Hutterites. Uh, they are a religious sect, much like the Amish or uh, Mennonite, and uh, they're different in that they embrace technology, and they're different too in that they live in communist-type communes, where each of them has a house that's just like everybody else has. And uh, they get paid a share of the profit of the business at the end of the year. The day we were there, we were walking around. The men work in the business and the women do uh, the cooking and cleaning and spackling. Uh, the day we were there, they were spackling uh, a new, head, uh, new uh, housing community. And one of them said, why Nikon? Why Canon and not Nikon? That sort of took us by surprise because you don't expect a Hooterite to say, you know, why Canon, not Nikon? And it turns out she has a Nikon. <laughs> so she ran and she got her camera and brought it back and posted her picture. And they sang a little picture um, in the corner. They were, um, they said, can we sing some hymns for you? We love singing while we're working. And they just burst into song and it was, quite an experience. This is one of my favorite sequences of photographs. Yeah, you've got uh, the, the woman 
dancing on the left and the girl on the right, uh, I hope nobody recognizes her, uh, was taken on Greenwich Avenue. Uh, I don't know who it is. The one on the left is in Oaxaca, and we came across these um, women dancing in their curling skirts. An example of sequencing, but not using people as much as things. Uh, I was sitting talking to a client, and he said, where's your next trip? Uh, people were getting pretty used to the fact that I go away a lot. <laughs> and I said, we're going down to West Virginia. We're going to photograph coal country. And he said, have you ever been in a mine? And I said, no, I haven't. He said, would you want to go in one? And I said, yeah, sure. So he set it up. Uh, he was on the board of the largest coal mining uh, uh, company in uh, West Virginia. And the first day we went down six stories. Uh, Sally was next to me and I said, light that guy up. She had one of these uh, uh, lights on her head too. So she went up and she shined it right on his uh, face. Because it was pitch black down there. It was fascinating. Uh, the, the Oklahoma City Memorial, uh, three people coming out of it taken in a time exposure, sort of like they were surviving. This is a, a strange picture. Uh, originally, this was the cover. And I looked at it and I said, he doesn't look like he's saying, take my picture. He doesn't even know he's walking in front of the camera. Uh, but uh, so we, we switched uh, to a different photograph. Yeah, this is called the photo bomber because Mike was taking the picture of the wall and then the, the broom uh, next to it. And then this little boy walked through and, you know, just that great profile made it. Uh, the next picture is two uh, similar photographs, but they're taken in very different places. The first is outside of Oaxaca, and it's at a, a, a cattle auction, horse okay. auction, et cetera. <laughs> uh, and they're waiting around to bid on a, a cow, and the one on the right is a cow, but it's okay. at a crematorium in, in India. Uh, everybody gets uh, cremated uh, the day after they die. And so it's uh, crematoriums are big business. Now this one is uh, a reverse of a bullfight. It's they put the townspeople in the middle and they invite uh, they have 40 different bulls. One at a time they invite the, the bulls in. This photograph was taken by a, uh, uh, what, uh, this scene was brought to us by uh, a, a photographer that we hired for the weekend uh, just to show us uh, sites that nobody would ever see or photograph. And this is in Cartagena, I don't know if you remember Cartagena. that, Cartagena, Colombia. And um, so he, he was great. He's a photojournalist and he knew exactly what we were trying to accomplish. Yeah. He, he came up with three wonderful excursions. For and he, he photographed it each one himself. So this was the first excursion and there are a couple coming up that will show. Mike likes the color red. <laughs> and Carrie mentioned the fishing village. We This was a little fishing village in Colombia. Uh, this is the second picture that this guy dreamed up. He took us to uh, uh, Palenque, Palenque uh, a small town. It's it, it, dirt streets. Uh, it is made up of the slaves who survived a shipwreck on the coast of Colombia. Uh, Colombia invited them all to come and live in this town, Palenque. And any descendants of theirs live there as well. I love these. This is a, uh, another great sequence of the turquoise color. And I love that photograph. 
Yeah. This is the picture that uh, took over the cover spot. And it was made at a school that I was invited to come into. Uh, 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 I knew that I wasn't supposed to go in the school, but the teacher said, come on in. And who's to resist a little uh, temptation like that? I took this boy, which uh, there's no doubt he wanted his picture taken. He's, he's the, the future greaser of, <laughs> Columbia, of uh, Cuba. Cuba. More two, Cuba. Two more baseball photographs in Cuba. Uh, uh, early morning train uh, in Cuba, uh, bringing uh, commuters into the town. Uh, we were in Hamilton. Uh, this is two different is uh, uh, when we were on our own, pretty much. The first is taking a picture through the window of the car, and the second, uh, a street uh, in uh, oh, a small Sanctus town. Spiritus. Sanctus Spiritus. Sanctus Spiritus. And by the way, we were in Cuba in March of 2020 and got back the day that everything shut down. So we, we made it just in time. I love this, the green. This was Mike McQueenie. This is this was a great selection by Mike McQueenie of the Cuban car and then the Oaxacan cafe. Uh, a, a doorway and uh, some kids having a drink. This shows a, a gathering place. There are two kinds of gathering places. One is barber shops and people who go in barber shops, they take their motorcycles and pull them to a stop. Uh, here we have a bicycle. And the other photograph is uh, a bus stop. And I photographed at the bus stop and it was like, nobody knew I was taking their picture. <laughs> Uh, next, we're going to see the Irish Travelers. And you'll see this is um, this is an Irish Traveler that we met. We went and, and uh, drove around Ireland with an Irish photographer who spends all his time photographing Irish Travelers. And um, this first... 30,000. And this, the first day, we went to this family. And this is the typical old caravan that the Irish Travelers would travel around in. Now they're more in uh, like uh, motorhomes, but this was the old, everything that was their home, this, the, this caravan. They're encouraged to stay at home, not to travel. Yeah, Ireland would prefer to just have- Here are the, uh, some kids that around their home. They also, horses play a big part in the Irish traveler life. They trade and, and the kids are just <laughs> a young fun. boxer. Uh, They're very macho. Yeah, they love showing off their their boxing skills. Uh, this is uh, inside looking out and outside looking in. Uh, the inside looking out uh, is in a uh, a trailer that holds seven kids and the parents. And there are no more than four rooms. So they are crammed into sleeping in there. I like this one because it, it tells a story about people. Uh, uh, on the left, the little boy asked me, would you like to see my uh, puppies? And I said, yeah. And he goes crawling into the doghouse to get the puppies. And right on the right, there's a little boy lying there. Uh, I said, I, we walked around a lot. I said, I'm having a tough time taking your picture. Uh, why don't you do it uh, the way you be, like to be remembered? He said, I'll play dead. <laughs> then he went and he lay down. This is a celebration, the one year celebration of the death of a child. This is the third picture from uh, that photographer. Iran. 
these are, are Pasifino horses. Uh, do you know them at all? Their, their feet make a lot of noise, and they have an, a really unique gait, and they just they like prance. And um, anyway, it's, and they're big in Cartagena. And as the horse moves forward as fast as he can, uh, the head of the rider stays absolutely still. And this horse is going up. So this photographer's idea was, um, he said that there's gonna be a parade today, tonight in Cartagena. And why don't we go down where the horses are gathering and we can photograph them getting the horses ready. So off we went. No other photographer was there that night. No, yeah, it was just us. And Mike was the brilliant one who got down on his stomach and shot through the horse legs and got the silhouettes. Speaking of silhouettes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we have a silhouette of a woman in India and a silhouette of a man uh, tending the door at the Greenbrier. A woman I noticed taking a cell phone shot of her friend. So I went up to her and I said, may I take a photograph of you? And she said, certainly. And that goes very well with the dark train to the right. Um, then uh, we go from Morocco on the left to uh, Coney Island on the right. how we're going to experience uh, uh, getting painted. Uh, you can see Sally and me photographs of us having uh, been covered in paint during the day. These are the holy festivals in India, and it's they, it, they're crazy. They are just wild. And you have to, when you go to photograph them, you just have to wrap yourself up, you, yourself and your camera, and so you don't get paint everywhere, but you still do. It's very it, hard to it, Spelled H-O-L-I. <laughs> it's so much fun. We just had one in um, Greenwich the other day, um, like a few weeks ago. A mini. A mini holy festival. Uh, uh, people on buses uh, on the left uh, in India and on the right in Bogota. Now we're going to go on Route 66. This was my sequence. <laughs> I will own up to this one. If you look at the spinning uh, color on the cone, it reminded me of the staircase. Uh, here you have a, a photograph shot down into the sidewalk, a reflection on a really rainy night and a woman uh, in Albuquerque. On Road 66. We were just back, we went back to this diner just a couple of months ago and Mike had a copy of the photograph and he wanted to give it to her, but she wasn't there. Some more of our West. And checking in at a hotel and then uh, uh, two gentlemen enjoying a drink. This, uh, uh, looking at that photograph, it's a deserted gas station. Uh, does anybody get the feeling of uh, uh, Hopper? Edward Hopper. Edward Hopper. Well, I put it on the internet uh, on okay. Facebook without saying a word about it. Uh, and right away, two or three people commented, it's very Hopper-esque. And one of them, who happens to be a friend, uh, took a woman from a hopper painting and put the woman into the gas <laughs> station and uh, he posted it. You see it there on the left. This is uh, what Sally was mentioning when she said, uh, if the guy says no, she just leaves. Well, here we walked into this barber shop. I said, would you mind if I took photographs? And he said, yes, I would. So I said, would you mind if I waited a few minutes? And he said, not at all. Sally. And I left. <laughs> Sally left. I left nicely. I said, thank you very much. 
1982? Well, uh, he had on uh, a red t shirt with a black, uh, no black coat over it. Yeah, he just had the red t shirt on. And uh, he, he sort of clashed with the background, as a matter of fact. So he turned around and he left for a couple minutes and he came back wearing a black barber shirt. He said, now you can take that. <laughs> and this is the final photograph in the book. Uh, he's a, uh, 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 many people see, see this and they, they say, do you take your spaniel everywhere? <laughs> and it wasn't uh, my spaniel. Uh, he was in a ghost town and he went to the, I pointed the camera right at him and he went to the far corner of the, the intersection. He got so spooked. He got spooked. So I sat down right on the curb with my camera down low going, uh, as he started to walk back, going click, 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 and hoping that one of them would be right. And sure enough, he was in perfect focus for this one. And he was thinking, now you can take my picture. <laughs> and Sally was nice. She took our picture. Yes. And that's the end. So, does anybody have any questions? Anybody on the Zoom, in the chat, or anything? I don't think we have any questions, but we did have just at the beginning. Um, Chantal said, it is a fabulous book, unique, beautiful, reflecting my Thank amazing you. humanity and interest in people. Thank you, Chantal. She's another photographer. She's a brilliant photographer. So that means a lot. Yeah, everyone can feel free. Oh, yes. what's, what's next on your... That's a good question. We don't mm -hmm. know. COVID, we just shut down on in COVID. And, and actually, it ended up being good for Mike because he could do work on the book for two years. <laughs> and um, so we're not quite sure what yeah. we're going to do. I became ill during the time and haven't quite recovered yet, but I'm getting there. So then we're, we may, I, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. We are going back to where the Amish are because we have a place um, in, uh, it's the northwest corner of Maryland. And um, it's near a little Amish community. And so every time we go there, we run up and, and we're getting to be known there as those people with the big cameras. And so um, we, we had a wonderful photo shoot there last uh, fall when they were harvesting the wheat and they were throwing it up on a horse-drawn wagon. And they, uh, these boys are wearing straw hats and suspenders and just, it was amazing. And um, so we we go up there a few times a year, and so we hope to see them again. And maybe we'll go to Indiana. Our, our family from there moved to Indiana recently, and so um, we visited them in southern Indiana a couple of times. So maybe we'll go back there, take a big Midwest trip again. I've written to uh, Joseph, who led the uh, Irish Travelers Expedition. Um, he says it's better to come in the summer while the kids are there, except uh, uh, the Hungarians or the uh, the Ukrainians are overflowing the country. Uh, uh, they're staying in a lot of the, the hotels and it's hard to get a room. Yeah. So maybe next year. Maybe next. We'd love to go back to Ireland. That would be um, that would be a thrill. I have a question from Scott and Karen. Um, is Sally planning to produce a book of her oh. photographs? <laughs> and the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> I watched Mike go through it and I thought one book in this family is plenty. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> um, Julie says, are you ever without a camera? Actually not, now that the iPhone has great cameras, as long as I, I just feel comfortable as long as I have my iPhone. It's a lot more portable. Um, Deb says, terrific program. Thank you. Love the behind the scenes for the context. Beautiful book. Congratulations. Um, Jane says, thank you for an inspiring presentation and sharing your wonderful book. Could you comment on how to capture silhouettes so well? How to capture silhouettes? Um, 
you got to be in a place where it's really sunny and the person that you're taking the picture of is in the shade. And so you're shooting through them and they, they magically turn into silhouettes. The, the two that come to mind are the, the woman in India. She's, uh, she's up in a, the window. A yeah. window. It's like a table. And the man uh, uh, in the Greenbrier uh, both had bright beyond uh, bright on the, the behind them. Behind yeah. Behind them, and you focus on the brightness, and they uh, disappear in the black. And the the four uh, the four women playing uh, handball were an example of this. They were in the shade of a tree that went over the court and the court was extremely sunny and all was in the sun. Yep. Lynn asks, will you ever try to photograph the Yukon women's basketball team <laughs> members? <laughs> That's funny. Um, we were huge with Yukon women's basketball fans and we did run into them in an airport once. They were traveling, or maybe they, it was the profession, they were, That's some the of them question. were now on a professional team, and we were just starstruck, so maybe. <laughs> Hopefully so. I was going to ask, um, when you're taking these photos, are you envisioning what the final shot will be in that moment and sort of monitoring it on your digital camera, or after the fact, are you ever surprised maybe by something you didn't see in the shot or I would say a little bit of both okay because I think like I just remember back when we were photographing the the, um, the Amish um, harvesting the hay I was I was so nervous that I wasn't going to be able to get it because it was such an incredible opportunity and I thought I'm, I'm going to blow it I know I'm going to blow it but I could see that it could it had such potential so and we're running next to the the wagons. We're just running alongside them and getting in front of them and running behind them. And um, we probably spent 45 minutes photographing them. And I just was hoping that they would come out. I mean, I, in my mind, I could picture them, but I wasn't sure how they were going to turn out. And then it was so nice to download them and see the results. They were just, I love them. Can you go back to the one of the eye? Oh, yeah. Okay. Good point. This is the turquoise door. Perfect example. Okay. There, yeah, uh, it says, um, uh, make sure you see the eye or don't miss the eye. The boy on the right is looking through and you see, if you look really closely, you'll see his eye. So you see the hand and then you see the chain and then over in the corner, the slit of the door, there's this eye. <laughs> and Mike did not see that when you were I, I didn't it. see it, no. But when he got home, he said, oh my God. <laughs> and I'm not sure you noticed all the turquoise that was going on in the. In oh, the I Cuba. just took the pic picture and. So you know, yeah, things, <laughs> things happen. <laughs> um, Somebody asked, how did you get interested in photography in the first place? Um, well, I've been photographing all my life, uh, not seriously, uh, and Sally the same thing. And uh, I read about Eddie Soloway's uh, uh, workshop and said, I want to do that. And I said to say, oh, Sally, would you mind if I took a week off? Uh, went to Mexico and took this workshop and she said, uh, go for it. And that was how I got back into it big time. And he, he did and he came home and, and I could tell that I think it was, I had to do this. I, it was, I wanted to get into it too. So yeah. that was the beginning. Uh, he said, anybody want to say anything before you leave? And I was near tears. And I said, uh, uh, I want you to know this workshop has changed my life. And um, the guy next to me started crying. <laughs> <laughs> and it did change your life. It just changed my life. Oh. So, any anything else? 
Look, it's eight o'clock. Good timing. Jerry, certainly you must have a question. <laughs> well, yes, I'm wondering what the title is of your next book. <laughs> <laughs> What's the title of your next book? Oh, thank you. Uh, 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 old man shows. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, this is it. One is enough. Maybe you can call me to talk to the readers at Pro Other. We'd love to. We'd love to. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. Yep. The one thing you didn't see was uh, any photographs of architecture. I have a lot of photographs <laughs> of architecture, but they didn't fit in. Uh, boats. Right, right. Uh, my, Your very favorite photograph. My very it favorite wasn't photograph. wasn't in the book. <laughs> you mentioned that your, your workshop changed your life. I've never been part, taken part in the workshop. Could you explain just what it is that it does for you? Good question, Jerry. Yeah, you can answer that. Well, we often find workshops where we we know the photographer and and admire that photographer's work and sort of want to learn more about how to do that particular um, kind of work. And um, often they have it in a uh, in a locale that's unusual. And that is travel photography. Uh, but where it's in a, a single place and you meet in the morning and you get your, uh, you, you do your learning and you. Uh, you have a little class, like class session in the morning, and then you go out and photograph in, in the afternoon. And then you come back and you download and you work on your images and you pick the 10 best ones and you come back the next morning and show your 10 images and that goes on for seven days and it's so it's exhausting it's really it's a lot of work but then you meet the best people like Chantal who had asked that question was in a workshop with me and it just really it's you get to you are with people who love photography as much as you do and it's um, just an incredible experience. I'm thinking now of a book which I found downstairs put out by National Geographic on um, how to be a good photographer. It goes through the various technical aspects of photography and illustrates pictures that uh, that uh, show the use of that uh, particular perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was wondering, well, is that a sort of a shorthand way of taking a workshop to get a good book on photographic technique? Sure, but I, I just like I'm more of a experiential person, so I want to be there and I want to I want to be with other people and I want to uh, I want to take some photographs and then learn about how maybe I could improve them and and um, these, these see two, others photographs. These two photographs that are up here uh, are rich in color, each one of them, and one of the things people say about the photography in the book. Is that the colors are so rich, and uh, you couldn't do that if you weren't uh, there and seeing it in person. Uh, you couldn't read about it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard. I mean, it's taken us. We've been doing this for a long time, and we still are learning. Obviously, it's um. Did you say it's before good. when you first started? I might have missed it. I'm trying to do the technological <laughs> stuff. Um, but did you did you say how you choose your location? That's a good question. We really didn't. But um, some. Well, I I leave it up to Mike because he always said <laughs> he'll just say, "Why don't we go to Morocco?" Okay, that <laughs> sounds like a good idea. Morocco <laughs> like, well, is hard to get to. I feel like it's not so I super know. direct, right? No, yeah. it's not. But it we got there and. We went, um, we've been twice, yeah. right? And um, and just loved it. It's just an incredible country. And those people, they're really hard to photograph. That's really a place where they say no photographs. And, um, and you really have to work on talking to them. In that case, I, I did try to, to 
photograph some people and I spent time with them and and um, talked to them and um, and I think if you show respect and understanding and um, they'll let you take their pictures. That was Morocco. We R Richard Martin led that trip. He's uh, in the book. Um, he uh, it was his first time to Morocco as well. And he learned a lot about what to do, what not to do. But we went to some incredible cities, Essaouira, uh, a fishing village, uh, Chef Chowan, uh, 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 the Boo City. Uh, just, you couldn't take a bad photograph. And- uh, Yes, you could, because we deleted a lot when we got over here. Yeah. But that's the thing, you can take a bad photograph, even uh, in a beautiful country. This, <laughs> this particular book has, I'm saying many that could be in, a, in your Alderman book, uh, but uh, you can't put them all, can't have them all, all the time. So I think that the India, when that opportunity came, we watch, we're, we're um, in, in contact with a lot of photographers and they, they say, oh, I'm gonna to go to India or I'm going to Vietnam or something. And so we're just on some lists and we, if the timing is right and, the, and it sounds like a good place to go, then we'll take those. Or else, as Mike will say, let's go uh, drive Route 66. So he, he just, he, he's always a <laughs> great idea. So I, I just followed his lead. Can't imagine you have any bad photos. At least compared to we, the rest of us we would take. <laughs> <laughs> we do, but, um, but what's your one tip for someone who's starting out in photography? Or what's your one, one? What's your one tip or or five? Tips. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on how to get it right. I think you want to um, you want to have a purpose for the photograph. So what are you trying to convey in your photograph? And sometimes um, people just see a pretty sight and they just photograph it. But what what are you trying to look at? What are you trying to draw the, the viewer into? Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah. yeah. And um, so that's, you have to think about that. What's your point? And um, then there are a lot of other just technical things. Not, not, we never really talk about cameras or anything like that. It's really all about composition and finding an interesting composition. and. Um, being in a place and walking around and looking at something and and trying to find the right composition, I guess. So we, we never just go, well, we used to, but we don't anymore. Just go up and click and walk away. You go up, something draws your attention and you go up and you see it. What drew your attention and how's the best way to um, capture that? And so you really have to work on it. I guess that would be my tip is if you want to get a good picture, you can't just walk up and take it usually. I have um, Chantal um, unmuting. Can you hear us? Yes, I do. Uh, one second, let me just increase your volume oh, just no. a moment. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, just a sec, just a sec. I have to try that. There you are, we can hear you. We can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hello? Yes. yes, can we you can hear, hear us? Yes. Great. Do you have I a can... question? Well, my question was more a comment to, to say to, to the, the participants that people like Mike and Sally are very inspiring, not only because of the quality of the images they both produce, but by the human qualities that they have and doing photography, even when you do architecture or landscapes, there is, there's always about the, it's always about the meaning, what it does to you. And I think that when you look at the photographs that you have seen tonight, it, it tells a lot about how they have, well, Mike has, has felt about those situations. And uh, I think it's, doing photography is so much more than taking a picture, you know? Uh, it, it's really about the experience you have for yourself, but also the interactions you have, the people you meet and what it tells to us. And you have been like beacons in, in, you know, in the workshops that you have taken with people. So thank you for doing what you're doing because it's very, very inspiring. 
Thank you, Chantal. Thank you so much. Any other questions from Zoom? That's it. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> They're buying a book. Do you want Great. Okay. Well, yeah. well, let's close the Zoom. <laughs> the Zoom. Bye, everybody on Zoom. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Nice.